As you can see here, I have three Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. Essentially what I'll be doing is three different full reviews about the Raspberry Pi 2 in very specific cases. So let's go ahead and open up our first Raspberry Pi 2. As this episode, we're going to do a full review on how the Raspberry Pi 2 performs as an open source media player. So, as you can see here, just open it up. I bought mine particularly from uh, Allied Electronics. And let's see what we got here, just to make sure we know what we got everything. So this is just instructions for safe use and the regulatory compliance and how it tells you the warnings on do not go over a certain amount of electrical current. Very important information to know because of course it is a very sensitive board. So obviously we wouldn't want to fry it from static and that's it. Alright, so obviously you have to make sure you have other accessories with you because it just literally comes like this. It does not have anything else. Um, so make sure you either buy it in a package, as they usually do on Amazon, or that you just make sure you buy all the necessities. For example, the power cord or cables or cases or any other accessories. In this case, because I'm going to make it into a multimedia, I obviously bought a few things. I bought myself a wireless keyboard. There you go, you can see that better. There you go. Yep, so I got myself a simple keyboard. Nothing to it, just open it up like that. There's the battery, there's your connector, your USB. And that's it, right? uses the exact same connector, this one in particular anyway. Uh, actually, let me show you the box. Maybe that'll help you find it better if you happen to see it in a flea market or something. This is what mine looks like. Mind you, this is probably a standard casing or standard box. They usually sometimes come in a box like this or they will come in a more fancier box. Alright, let's continue with Raspberry Pi then. So, of course, this is anti-static bag, so I have to be extremely careful. Obviously, it's a lot easier if you have an anti-static wrist strap or something. It's obviously better practice. In this case, I can't seem to find mine, so I have to be a little more careful for, in my case. So, if, it's, if possible, it's better to grab from the sides here, or to make sure you grab from here as well, so that you're not in contact with the board too much. So, there you are. Very nice. Now, I have a very simple case that we're going to put it in, so let's take advantage to do that now. This case belonged to a Raspberry Pi B+, so we're obviously going to put this to the test, whether I can actually get it to fit. Everybody says it should, so if that's true, there we go, just sits in nicely. And that is seems to be it. No problem there. There you go. That's it. No problem at all. So there's our Raspberry Pi 2 in a B plus case. So obviously they are, well, compatible. All right, and now I'm gonna bring my micro SD card. I've already programmed it with OSMC. In this case, I'm just doing this as, an, as a sample as, to try it out. And that is it on the hardware side. Obviously, just connect my keyboard. There we go. Sorry if I got out of range there. I plug that in like so. Just has to be. There you go. It's a little rough. Okay. And we are ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and boot it in just a moment. I'm going to plug it in and connected to my monitor and then we'll get started alright I have a better idea move aside my friends let's bring in the mini projector I got this from Everbuying all the details about the specific model of this of this projector is in the description below and very simple has all your modes here. It's got your power in here, your audio jack here, so you can plug in headphones. And then you also got your VGA and your HDMI right there. 
And then, right here you have an AV, you also have a USB, and an SD card. So you can just plug it in directly. Your power button's right there. Obviously your lens is right here. 400 lumens, so it's not a very, it's not the most powerful, but it's great just for smaller spots. And you can adjust it, and you can actually apply a little force, and it opens up even more for more focus, or to blur, or to fix, depending on your situation, obviously, as you can see. And it just goes all the way in. Or you can just push it all the way back out. As you can see, really awesome. So let me put this all together, and we're going to go ahead and watch whatever I got onto the wall. So go for it. Go! Should see a... Should be warming up right now. There you go. Woohoo! As you can see, it's somewhat quiet. Not, you know, not super loud. Just fine. Okay. And I'm going to plug in my Raspberry Pi now. I've plugged it in. There you go. You can see it now booting, which is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the power now because now I'm just going to be controlling from here so using its touchpad and using its buttons here to control from here and then finish off the installation so let's get to it so right now we're just waiting for OSMC to finish booting because it is the first time it being installed you can always go to the description below to check out how I installed OSMC onto the memory card in the first place. I have screenshots as well as how I do it in all three operating systems through Linux, through Mac, and Windows. Hello everyone, so I decided to change to a different room. I've plugged the Raspberry Pi 2 into my television instead just because the advantage of the of having the mini projector is when you're in a small room or something and you don't really care about degraded quality of the picture. For example, you always have it set on YouTube or something. Once you've already done the installation at least once on a monitor or on a TV, uh, I suggest this just because it's easier, obviously. Uh, because the problem with the with the actual projector is that it's not a very clear picture. So you literally either have to get really close quarters or you just have to hope that you can you know read it properly the first time so obviously I'm gonna go ahead and, and choose my language and all that let me do that first before I forget and yeah licenses of course make sure that you're reading your licenses essentially what it is is it's asking you about the free software foundation software you are using GNU you are using you know when we speak of free software we're referring to freedom not price mind you Protect your rights, make sure there's any restrictions to forbid anyone from denying you in case of distribution of any programs or that you have copy left, copyright, software, offer licenses to legal permission to copy, so you are allowed to copy this. And of course, it's not their responsibility of anything that you end up doing with the software. So for, obviously, for example, if there's a proprietary program or any other copyrighted material that I end up putting on this device, they're obviously not responsible for that. And there's obviously terms and conditions that apply to that. And it also, the license applies to any program or any work that contains any note, place, and a copyright. So that's essentially what I just told you. Any modifications translated, addressed by you, yourself, because obviously they don't have a warranty on this software because you literally do what you want with it. And so on. So. That's essentially what it's saying, and of course, always take appropriate action in terms of what you are, you know, charge a fee for the physical act of transferring, copying, you know, those are all separate things, and that you should be careful. Don't just put anything on it if you know you're going to get in trouble for it, and, and so on and so forth. So, that's the thing that is, essentially, that's a part of the summarized version of the license. Obviously, it's a long, longer than that. You can always read this yourself. I'm going to go ahead and continue. So, networking. I'm going to uh, do that later. Typically, you can actually just tell it to do it automatically and just make sure that you inst that you plug it into your network. And then we're good to go. And as you can see, here I am. 
Now I get to choose whether I want to use the interface, OSMC interface, or if I want to use the classic. My personal, I prefer Kodi, uh, but others may prefer the new one. Totally up to you. But I prefer that, and I kind of don't want a new slider. I'm, I'm good. Thank you so much, OSMC. Team OSMC, you guys are amazing. So, let's continue. Exit. Right? Um, now, obviously, there you go. Let's give it a moment to adjust. And that's it. Welcome to Cody. Now, obviously, I have things, uh, the graphics and all that, which can now be done. All right. Oh, yeah. May the fun begin. So before I finish off the video here, as you can see on the screen, I have a various screenshots and all from Ubuntu and Mac, but it's essentially the same in Windows. It's essentially just an .exe file, download and double click and away you go. So just go into the command line. There's commands listed on the osmc.tv slash downloads for more details for all platforms. Or if you want to be on the safe side, you can just format the SD card beforehand with the SD formatter, which is compatible with both just Mac and Windows. At the end of the day, no matter what platform you're using, whether it's any of the three operating systems, this is what you're looking for. Usually it's best to choose the newest version, at least that's the safe bet, but depending on your need. And of course, select the SD card that you have already formatted, and that's it. You have installed OSMC. Thanks for watching, everyone, and subscribe for more awesome videos.